Hello, I'm Joe Lewis. Welcome to this elite private lesson on shadow fighting. Today we're going to cover 10 reasons why it's so important that you shadow fight before every workout, beyond just warming up your joints and your muscles. Whenever you go into any type of a fight, it's incredibly important to have a sense of purpose in order for your techniques to be truly effective. Now, most people when they get in good shape think that that's all they need to be successful in a competition such as a fight. However, do you realize nine out of 10 mistakes that the fighters make who are in good physical shape are mental, not physical? So the 10 reasons we're gonna go over today will show you how to iron out those mental problems that many of us have. Now, before we get into each one of these reasons, let me show you a little bit about how I want you to add some training drills into your workout. Now, follow me down here. Now, whenever you throw a punch, it's important how you make a fist. Now, watch this. Look at my palm. Most fighters are taught to make a fist this way. They take your four fingers and they roll them like so. Now, watch the thumb. They take the thumb, they fold the thumb down across these first two fingers where the tip of the thumb ends up touching this middle finger. That's incorrect. Some of these styles that I work with in Okinawa, the Shorin Ru, the Kobe Chidu, the Matsubai Shidu, the Shorin Ru, Shorin Ru, what they would do is they take this finger here and lock it straight. That makes the fist a little bit tighter. Some of the Ishin Ru styles, which started around 47, 48, some of them would put the thumb up on top of the knuckle. Now watch. There's a muscle which goes from this part of your wrist, it comes underneath and across your forearm this way. And that muscle is called the pronator teres. It's designed, its purpose is to rotate the wrist this fashion, all right? Now, when you take your thumb, watch my finger here. If instead of taking your thumb and touching the middle finger, you keep this last joint between the tip of your thumb and this first joint, right there where the fingernail ends, there's a little groove right here where I'm touching. And what you wanna do is place that little groove right against this forefinger. See the forefinger move? Now watch how that groove I lock it right against that forefinger. Does everybody see it? So the thumb is not on top, nor does the thumb touch the middle finger. To make this pronator teres muscle, to make it contracted properly, it'll make your wrist stronger if you lock your thumb this way. And what it does is, let me rotate the fist over this way. If you notice between this knuckle, the wrist, and the thumb, that little triangle, it makes this joint area in there a lot stronger. And if you take your thumb and lock it down incorrectly this way and have somebody bend your wrist, it's easy for them to bend your wrist. But then you lock your thumb, watch it again. If you lock it correctly and hold the wrist tight, it's a lot harder for them to bend your wrist. Now wrapping the hands, I don't want to get into how to wrap the hands. There's probably 20 different ways you can wrap your hands. Basically, there's one reason we wrap the hands. You've got 27 bones in your hand. You've got eight corpals which go across your wrist here and then metacorpals, you've got five of them. And the reason you wrap your hands primarily is to keep these bones from separating. When the bones separate, that's what causes your injuries. Especially if you look in real tight, now coming real tight on my top of my hand, you notice there's a tendon which runs right across the top of my knuckle there. Now I'm gonna move the tendon. See the tendon move side to side? Now what you wanna do is learn to pull that tendon off the top of that knuckle and pull it down to the side. Now a lot of people, when they throw a punch, they throw a punch with two knuckles. I like to throw a punch with all four knuckles. I like to line up this third metacorpal bone with my forearm. If you punch with the two knuckles like so, now watch me rotate my forearm up, get a shot of my whole forearm. If I keep those two knuckles as a punch, notice my wrist is bent down. Does everybody see the wrist is bent down? I like to keep the wrist straight, so I like to line up that third metacorpal with the forearm. It makes my wrist a lot stronger. Now, when you do your shadow fighting, what I like to do is work my form as much as possible. Some people do it, even arm wrestlers will do this drill. They'll be driving down the street and they'll take a little handball and they'll squeeze it 10 times with the wrist straight. Then they'll bend the wrist like so and try squeezing it. Your wrist is a lot weaker in this position. Problem with working with a handball, I have one here is, you notice when I put it in the palm of my hand, I'm basically only working two fingers at a time. And what you want to try to do is get you one of these little grippers. I use the weighted kind. This is a, a one pound weighted one. It's got little beads or something in there. They used to make it with bird seeds and powder, but then when they break, you had a mess. And notice this one sort of fits the whole palm of my hand. I can work all four fingers at the same time. Every time you punch, there's only two things you want to contract. You want to contract your ankle because that's the source of your power and you want to contract your wrist. You don't want the rest of your arms or hips uh, tightening up when you're punching. Now, 
Notice here, I'm only working my fingers. Some people have a strong grip this way, some people have a strong grip this way. You want to work both. So to work both, as I'm shadow fighting, sometimes watch it, I'll just move this thing up between my fingers so that I can work my thumb, then drop it back down. So every time I punch, watch this in slow motion. The hand is completely relaxed. Just as I make contact, boom, I squeeze the wrist, relax. Squeeze the wrist, relax. 